This is Twit. This story has all our favorite, favorite topics all bundled into one. It has <laughs> Rust. It has AI. Uh, Linux, sorry to those in the Discord. Yes, yeah, sorry for those in the Discord who uh, are tired of AI. But it has AI. The and it, and the terminal, and of course it has Linux. What I'm talking about is the Rust-based terminal called Warp. It is now available for Linux, and it includes AI features. So a terminal with AI, you say, what could that possibly do for you? So this terminal functions almost more like an IDE or text editor by offering filtering and selections. So you can you can use your mouse to select select a text in your long one-liner command. For example, let's say you got a one-word typo in the middle of your very long one-liner command. Traditional terminals, you would be you would have to arrow all the way back to get to that word, way back to that text. But with warp you can just select it with a mouse and edit it. I know there's some other ways, but uh, on, on here you can just you just select it and then edit it nice and easy. So, so not only is, is there a cursor positioning, but it can, it, uh, it can include multiple cursors, uh, auto completion, syntax, highlighting, uh, commands are grouped in a block based, uh, grouping structure. It, it it's kind of difficult to describe that feature. But if you watch the video, I, you know, if you're interested in what that's talking about, I'd suggest going to the show notes, uh, finding that video and watching more details on it. Cause it's, it's kind of a neat way to, to do it, to go back and look through your, your, uh, your command you ran. So until now, previously warp was only available on Mac OS, but as one of their highest ranked, features or highest voted features, I guess, uh, feature requests, it is now available on Linux and it is already feature compatible with the Mac OS one. So everything works right on day one because apparently 98% of the code is pretty much the same. I don't know why they waited this long. So as mentioned at the top, Warp is built on Rust, including the Cosmic Text Library from System76, along with uh, their own UI framework, which they apparently plan to open source at some point. The autocomplete feature shows a box with the uh, descriptions of the flags you could run. So, you know, you got these autocomplete uh, flags up there and it'll tell you what it does too. So like, well, okay, I know there's a dash B, but what's dash B do? I don't know. So build, build also built right in the terminal is the ability to chat directly with the, the AI interface. You know, as you might do with Chat GPT or Microsoft's Copilot features. So, you know, if you forget a command or or you want to run, you, you forget the command that you want to run. You you can type uh, pound or a hat or hashtag as the, uh, kids, as the kids say call today. It these days. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just type type that hashtag and then describe in natural language what you're trying to do and. Uh, you know, it'll help you out, figure out the command and everything. You know, you you, you can use the AI to, to bug your errors. You know, so much more. So, you know, as I told someone in the Discord earlier who said they're tired of AI, I love AI. I mean, maybe the term, maybe we do hear too much, but I love AI. All the all the things natural language model, model tools can do for us today. You know, for those watching the video, my backgrounds pretty much all this year have been AI generated. You know, I, I have a topic I can generate some fun little background to kind of match up with what I'm going to talk about. And, you know, away I go. Super easy. You know, I find it game changing. I, I do plan to install Warp. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to install it tomorrow or maybe after the show here. But there is one feature to Warp that has a lot of potential users saying, no way, it's not for me. And that is the fact that to use Warp, you do have to log in to either their a free or a paid account. You know, a lot of people find it odd, you know, to have to log in to use your own terminal on your computer. Mm -hmm. 
But if you're bothered by it logging in, you know, you're you're using a cloud service. You know, if you're not bothered by by logging into your own terminal, it seems it could be a very powerful tool. In fact, maybe this is a tool that maybe it should have been called, maybe they should have saved the name and this should have been called PowerShell. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I've been testing, you know, I plan to test this. I've been testing a lot of new things lately. And one of these days, I'm going to need to have a little housekeeping corner. I don't know what I'll call it, but somewhere where I, where I can update you all on on things like my experience with what I what I find out using Warp, and you know, my also my my little review that I'm going to have for me having used OpenSUSE for I don't know the past three weeks or so now. So I got some things to catch up on and uh, share with you later. And, and warp will be in that list, so I'll tell you how. Uh, okay, it's so any good if it's all hype. I've got a, I've got a question. I've got a, I think, I think the important question, even bigger than you've got to have an account logged in to be able to use it, and that is, is the AI model running on your local computer, or is warp sending all of your keystrokes off to the warp servers? That was the first thought I had. Of course, mm-hmm. it's sending it off to the remote servers. Well, I def I'm fairly. I don't know the answer, but I'm fairly confident if you're doing the chat with it that it's sending it off, and that's part of the explanation for needing an account. Yeah. But yeah, I guess does it send off every little command? Like if you do, you know, SSH, SSH. username, <laughs> password, or <laughs> is it sending all that off? Boy, that's a good point. Yeah, um, and, and so the other thing is, are they then used? Because this is this is the way I would do it if I if I didn't care. We could just stop that sentence there. Um, <laughs> I, I would take I would take the commands that my users run and fold that back into the language model, right? That would be the best way to train it, except that means you're training it with people's real data and passwords, and then all you have to do is make your model and typos. Loose. Well, typos too, but then all you have to do is find one of those ways to, to jail, jailbreak your model, get it to hallucinate, and then start spitting out real user sessions. And well, suddenly you go scrape everybody's passwords off of it. I, I get the heebie jeebies about this. I do Just not. Just go to the dark side all the time. It's, they they I, got I, it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> they used AI to figure out how to do it right. Yeah, you're not making it better. This is not making me feel better about it. <laughs> or AI is uh, per, you know, Skynet's pretending is like, oh yeah, it's all safe. It's yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You can trust us. <laughs> I still gotta try it though. I'll just. I'm gonna definitely be cautious about any sensitive Put data. Put it in I would say. And don't SSH, SSH out of it. Yeah. Keep keep that particular snake in the box. <laughs> hey there, I'm Micah Sargent. Look, as a geek myself, I feel it's only fair if I admit something. We can be kind of hard to shop for. So what do you get for that geek in your life who has everything already? Well, a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes, and special content. So purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubtwit, and they will thank you every day. <laughs>